Welcome to the GP Llama YouTube channel. And for owners of the Wahoo Ace, Roam 3 or Bolt 3, this one is for you. There's been some significant changes to these bike computers this week. One is a substantial change to the map, and there's a few updates that might cause some friction, but that isn't entirely on Wahoo. Some quick background on where things are at today with these units. The Ace launched in late 2024, and the Rome 3 and the Bolt 3 followed up around six months later, in May 2025. There's no question why we'll face some early challenges with these Series 3 bike computers. The biggest thing being change. Change from the Element app, having to use now the Wahoo app for device management. Change from button only to touchscreen slash hybrid on two of these devices, which can also be disabled. The removal of the physical LEDs that people loved. And to remain competitive in this space, they've had to continue adding features and support for more sensors. This inevitably adds more complexity in setup, configuration, and use. Now, simplicity was always the draw card for people who didn't want all the bells and whistles of, say, a Garmin Edge unit. But Wahoo also added the bell too. Okay, so onto the big update that landed this week across all three devices, starting off with the friction points. And the first one, well, this isn't too bad. They've added pairing to a new phone requires a matched pin code to be accepted on both devices to establish a secure connection. We've seen this in other devices as well. When you start pairing things to your phone, it'll come up with a number, a number on here, they need to match before you hit OK, and away you go. That's update number one, not much in it. Next one, optional passcode lock. Protect your element and any personal data by adding a passcode. You can add, change, and remove a passcode from the device settings menu on the element computer. If a passcode is set, the element will be locked after powering on. So just like your phone, when you turn it on, you'll need to unlock these if you have that set, or by manually locking it from the device settings menu. So for example, if you pull your bike up at a cafe, you wanna walk away from your bike, you can optionally set it to lock the screen or lock your computer entirely. And again, you'll need that pin to open that up. Option to add the passcode lock has been added to the final step on the onboarding process. So if you're brand new to one of these devices, running through the setup, or you do a factory reset, you'll be presented with that option. Passcode can be removed remotely using a currently connected instance of the Wahoo app on your mobile device. Factory reset now requires a passcode verification if enabled. And they have a link there for more information on the passcode lock on the Ace, Bolt 3, and Roam 3. Actually, that's, there we go. Not that it makes any difference from where you're sitting. So a little more on this, the passcode. Yeah, look, your mobile phone has a passcode. This just adds another level of personal security. Should your device, these devices, fall into the hands of someone who doesn't know the passcode? Now, how does the little Bolt 3 handle it with, uh, with no touch screen? Well, slowly, I think, is the answer. One thing to note with all of that, as I rearrange those in better order, using a passcode is optional. Next up on the list, reduced file system access via USB. Now, things change with this update when it comes to plugging these into a computer. The Element units have always used MTP as opposed to a mass storage device. That doesn't change. Windows has native support for that. On a Mac, you'll need to use a third-party tool to access the files on here. What changes, though, is that USB MTP is disabled by default. This can be enabled using the Wahoo app under device settings and syncing those up. You'll then get access to most of the files on the file system here. The standout being that completed fit files are no longer accessible via USB. So your activities can't be manually downloaded onto your computer. That's not ideal for a few use cases, but here we are. Mm. Now fit files and activities can be synced up via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi to the Wahoo Cloud and accessed that way, but I would really like to see an option for advanced users to get to those fit files via USB. Hmm. Now, a little more from the Wahoo support site on this one, just as a bit of background. As of August the 5th, 2025, if the allow USB access toggle is enabled in the Wahoo app, again, if it's toggled on, default is off, an element computer can be connected to a laptop or a desktop computer via USB. Now, in compliance with CE Red, which I've also heard called EU Red, maybe we just call it simply Red, to better secure potentially sensitive private user data and to better secure our products overall, a reduced selection of the computer's file system can be accessed via the native file explorer on Windows or a third-party file explorer app for Mac OS. Hmm, that's all I've got to say about that. So, on to the good news, the maps. And oh my, they are so much better to use now. Back on November the 8th, 2024, my very first observation with the Ace was that I couldn't see the maps out on the road. Now this wasn't related to screen brightness or visibility, that's another topic in itself, but the contrast and colors used were too light. It looks great indoors, looks fine at a desk, but it's almost impossible to read outdoors. 
That is finally sorted across all three units. Look, I'm really happy to see this updated and it goes a long way in making things a little bit more readable in some conditions where the screen brightness isn't ideal. Now, in addition to the contrast and color updates, there's been a new map layer feature and some bike lane overlays as well. Let's have a look at that out in the road now and a few other things. Okay, out on the roads for a closer look at these color and contrast updates to the map. I'm using the Wahoo Ace here, the Rome 3, the Bolt 3, exactly the same, just a little smaller, obviously. And words cannot describe how much better these maps are. Now, what you're seeing there, the blue lines, that's the new bike lane overlay. And if we click on the overlays button, we can turn off those bike lanes by clicking on bike lanes. Going back and a little further down the road. I can re-enable those on screen. And there we are. Now those bike lanes are shown to the scale of two kilometers. Any further out, say five kilometers, those bike lanes will disappear. But zooming in two kilometers or closer, those bike lanes will be shown on screen. A little further down the road, I'm approaching a climb now. This is Summit Freeride. I'm not following a set path or a predefined route. It's guessing where I'm going and it's done a pretty good job of it. I'm going to head up that climb. So as we approach the climb here, just double speeding this, I get a notification, Summit Freeride, starting off in 100 meters. A few more chevrons shown on screen there with the closer zoom level. And away we go. Now this is the default climb screen that pops up if you choose to have it pop up. And you can use the side buttons to zoom in and zoom out on data fields and have that elevation profile increase. Now, that's not my favorite page to use. This is my favorite page to use when following a climb. I like to have the top-down maps shown and the elevation profile with a few data fields at the top. It just gives me an easier way to, I guess, judge the effort. I could also put a few more data fields with distance to go for summit, etc. But that is Summit Freeride doing its thing, finishing just over the top of this climb here. All right, job done. A little further down the road, another climb, White Swan. If you know Ballarat, this is the west side. Now, what I'd love to see with this is a little flag on the elevation profile just to give an indication of where the climb actually finishes. Now, of course, it finishes on the grey. That's the downhill. But just chasing that flag or just having a little carrot up the road I'd love to see that. So that flag there, I've, I've put that in after uh, after the ride, obviously. But I'd love to see that there by default as an update. Okay, coming back into town, water towers. And just an indication here with the chevrons being red, that it's going to get a little steeper in about 100 metres. A little further in the ride, I'm in a bike lane, but it's not correctly marked as a bike lane on the ACE. So I'm not quite sure what's defined as a bike lane or what's not, but I guess it's a serving suggestion. All right, Strava Live segments. One is just about to pop up right here on screen. That is the Ballarat Airport. It's a new road, so the roads aren't actually there on the maps. But what does that look like when we hit Strava Live segments in real time? Okay, left-hand turn onto this live segment. Now, I don't have the page automatically popping up. But what happens here on the map screen and elevation screen is that orange line went a lot darker as I hit the start of that live segment. And scrolling across to the Strava Live Segments page, I get my time, time behind, PR, which is the KOM that I set with an absolutely blasting tailwind a few months back, and how far to go. Similar to when I'm using Summit Freeride, I still like the top-down visuals rather than just the side profile. Both would be perfect. Um, but scrolling back to the pages here, yes, I was listening to Skrillex, if you caught that, on the media control page. I'm back on the top-down view, and that's about it. But look, overall, these map contrast updates are an absolute world of difference, and I'm so happy to see them land on these units.
Okay, quickly whipping through the rest of the change log here. Added, skin temperature is now available as a configurable data field and is recorded in the fit files. Updated, minor user interface adjustments in the device settings menu and sub pages. Updated, ride started notification now shows which workout profile is currently being used. Uh, just a point of clarification here. Why we've chosen to call bike profiles or activity profiles workout profiles. Now for me, that's not terminology that I use. I don't do a workout on my gravel bike or my mountain bike. I go for a ride or I complete an activity. So calling the profiles workout profiles is a little confusing. It gets even more confusing if you are doing a workout within a workout profile. Might be just the English version of this. Other languages might have a different word for it. I'm not quite sure, but it confuses the absolute hell out of me, even when I read change logs like this. Next in the line there, just a few minor updates and things. So phone notifications, indicator red circle in the status bar is no longer shown for system notifications. They've updated a few fields here, elevation, GPS accuracy, and GPS heading. We now display dash dash when it's still acquiring a GPS signal. Updated distance remaining and distance to queue data fields on the map page are no longer shown until a GPS signal has been acquired. And updated shifter battery data field has been updated for improved visibility. Further down the list, we have some fixes. Fixes, fixes, fixes. Nothing really stands out there other than a few minor things. Um, but I guess the last one there is also important. Fixed several crash conditions. So they're the highlights of this massive firmware update for the Series 3 element units. Oh, by the way, I've also seen reports of people saying they have a few Wahoo routes appearing on their Series 3 units after this update. Apparently this was caused by the device updating before the app updated and a sync was happening that it shouldn't. At this point in time, a factory reset and a resync of your config from the cloud should fix that. But that was a small bump in the road with the release of the firmware for this and the updating app coming a little later to some people's phones. So we'll leave it there for now. I still have a whole list of things I would love to see on these units to make the on-bike experience a little better. Let's hope these updates keep rolling and rolling out fast, and some of those appear on here soon. All right, with that, thanks for watching. As always, the thumbs, the subscribes, the, all the YouTube things really help out, and we'll see you soon.